Well, hey there, it's Jamie from Not So Would Be Teacher back for our weekly video. And if you've been following along with me, then you know I've been doing a series about teaching writing. And I'm excited for today's video because we're gonna be talking about three ways that you, the teacher, can actually have more fun teaching writing. I think we talk a lot about how to make writing fun for students, but today, I wanted to focus more on you because the reality is if you're having fun teaching it, your students are gonna have fun doing it. So that's our plan. Can we start though by, sorry, I'm like a fuzzy in my hair. I, I just can't, I gotta get it out. Okay, sorry. All right, can we start off? I wanna get you commenting here so I can tell who's here, but tell me on a scale of one to 10, when you think about teaching writing, do you love it? That's a 10, like it's as good as, sipping a fruity drink out by the pool right now. Or one is like, I'd rather have indoor recess for a week with one puzzle missing five pieces. Where do you rank in that scale on one to 10? How do you feel about teaching uh, writing? I'm gonna try and get these comments up here. Oh, Chrissy, I'm glad you're liking this series. Paige, I hear you. Paige says she hates teaching writing. Paige, you are not alone. Sophia's about a two. Hey, that's, it's not a one, Sophia. It's something to celebrate, right? <laughs> All right, we've got a five. That's not so bad. I'm guessing a lot of you, we have a couple fives now. I'm guessing a lot of you prefer reading or math. And I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> In my fa teacher Facebook groups, when we talk about teaching writing, I feel like the majority of all teachers are like, oh, I hate it, it's not fun. So you're not alone if that's you. Uh, Chrissy says it was a one, but now she's more of a six. Awesome. Christy, hopefully we can get you up there. I don't know if we can get you like a 10, cause like 10's like fruity drink by the pool fun. I mean, it'd be hard to get a 10, but I bet we can get you a little higher than a six. Stephanie's a seven, awesome. Paige, I get it. She says, I feel like I know how to write, but when it comes to teaching it, I don't really have a clue. I get it. Knowing how to write but teaching and teaching writing are really big and different topics. I mean, writing is very subjective and even if you can write well, it's not quite the same as being able to deliver a great lesson teaching someone else to write, especially since our opinions of writing can be so different. I get it, Paige. It is one of the bigger challenges with writing. I hear you. Not having consistency, of, and Sophia says her kids don't enjoy it. Yeah, I get it. And I truly believe that when you start to like it, your kids will too. I think it goes hand in hand. And so hopefully these tips I give you today will be just like, a little something. I'm not gonna give you like a ton of stuff that's gonna overwhelm you. I know lots of you are on summer break or towards the end of your school year. I'm not gonna give you a whole bunch of stuff to overwhelm you. I really wanna give you three ideas to get you thinking about some new strategies you might wanna try next year that might make writing instruction, writing workshop, just more enjoyable and less like pulling teeth because when it's like pulling teeth, you know what happens? We don't enjoy teaching it. Therefore, our kids don't enjoy learning it. And then we don't protect the time. So our math lesson's going a little long and we're like, you know, oh, well, we'll just keep working on math. We won't do writing today. We're not fiercely protecting the writing time in our schedule because the reality is we don't love doing it. And when you don't love doing something, you'll find excuses to not do it. And so I want us to start to enjoy writing, teaching writing, and increase our confidence as writing teachers so that we will become more protective of the little time we do have to teach writing. Sound like a good plan? And Sophia says, please overwhelm me. <laughs> I never want to overwhelm you guys. I always like to break everything down into smaller pieces and give you something to think about. And then I'll be back next week with more things to think about. And I, I think it's, easier for us as we make plans going forward if we just take it in little bite-sized pieces, okay? So hang in there with me. So like I said, today I want to talk about three things that actually helped me to have more fun teaching writing. If you've been following me long, then you know I 
hated to teach writing. And some people find that funny now because I spend so much time helping other teachers to teach writing and people are like, wow, you must have always loved writing. But that's not the case. I always loved writing, but I never loved teaching writing. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have resources. I didn't feel confident. My students weren't having fun. It seemed like chaos in the classroom. And so I would look for excuses to not to do writing. Yeah, if math was going a little long, that's all right. You guys are working hard. Let's just keep, let's just keep doing it. If I want to stay out at recess a couple extra minutes, that's all right. It's fine. We deserve it today. You know, I'd, I'd make up excuses, anything. I remember actually having a thought. One time I was in the middle of teaching writing workshop and I'm a little embarrassed by this, but I actually had this thought like, I wish the fire alarm would go off. Like this is the perfect time for a fire drill. If we had a fire drill right now, I wouldn't have to teach writing. And of course I didn't want there to be a fire, but the fact that I would prefer to take 25 kids outside during a fire drill to teaching writing workshop was kind of a turning point for me. It shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't. And so I changed the way I taught writing. I tried a lot of new things. Some worked, some did not work until I found a solution that made writing more fun for me until I found a solution that made writing more effective for me. And so when I share with teachers about how to teach writing, I'm really teaching from my own experience. I've been where you're at and I know it's possible to make it a little bit better and that's what I wanna help you with. So today, how you, the teacher, can actually enjoy teaching writing a little bit more. Number one, let your students choose the topics they're going to write about. Now this is a one way to make it fun for your students too, but I really wanna focus on the teacher side today. And you might think, well, I don't want them to choose. Because the reality is we think prompts, projects, creativities, there'll be more control if that's what we use in our writing, right? I mean, if we tell them exactly what we want them to write and where we want them to write it and how we want it to look and what we want it to say, and then we can make it pretty and put it on the bulletin board, we like that kind of control. I mean, I did at least. I don't wanna to speak totally for you, but I liked having that kind of control. I didn't really love my students getting to have too much freedom in writing. I thought that's gonna get crazy. But over time I learned that my students would dislike writing, they would like writing more if I let them pick their topic. And I got tired of my students moaning and groaning, I don't like writing, I don't wanna do this, is it almost over, I have nothing to write about. So I started experimenting with letting them choose their topic. I taught them how to generate topics. Like I taught them how to come up with good personal narrative topics. I taught them how to come up with good opinion topics so that they would know in the future, which was a really good skill to learn. But then I let them pick to write about the things that they were motivated by, loved, were passionate about. And instantly they were moaning and groaning less. And guys, teaching any subject where all the kids are just moaning and groaning is never fun. Because the reality is we love our kids. And when you just feel like the whole room's like, oh, do we have to do this again? That's never going to be fun. I noticed a complete turnaround when kids were allowed to choose their own topic that they were a little like, ooh, I can't wait. You know, I had little girls researching the Eiffel Tower in Paris. And they were like, oh my gosh, Miss Sears, did you know this? Did you know that? Did you? And they were getting excited. And when they got excited, I got excited, you know, because I loved to, to see their passion. But here's something else that you might not have thought of. When we give these projects and prompts and craftivities, then we have to go, we have to grade them, right? And it's like 25 papers all about the exact same topic. So maybe we told them, like, you have to write a report about Abraham Lincoln. And then we have to sit there and read 25 reports about Abraham Lincoln. It makes grading extremely painful and dull. When my kids were allowed to choose their own topics, suddenly I had 25 papers about different topics. It was actually a whole lot less painful to do the grading. I know grading writing samples isn't fun, like Disneyland ride fun, but it's a lot more fun when you don't have to read so many of them about the exact same topic. So that was sort of like a hidden gem in letting my students pick their own topic. 
Um, Michelle, I do, I don't have any experience with kindergarten. I really focus on grades two through five. All right. Paige, have you been letting your kids choose their own topic? I feel like it's scary at first and then when you get over that little hump and you're like, hey, this isn't so bad. It can be kind of fun to read about all kinds of different things. And as a teacher, I just enjoyed the opportunity to learn about different topics that I didn't know much about. So instead of making kids write about things I was passionate about or things that showed up in the science and social studies standards, I'll let them write about things they were passionate about. And I think we all had more fun in writing because of it. So I know it can seem like a little bit of a jump, crafts and craftivities. You can like buy them on TBT and, and then you can like guide your kids through it. Like in paragraph one, I want you to write this. In paragraph two, I want you to write that. But it doesn't actually make a better writer. It usually makes a writer who is bored and then it makes a teacher who's bored. So consider that next year. How can you give your students a little more freedom to choose what they want to write about? And how could that maybe make writing just a little more interesting for you and a little more fun, okay? Now, number two, my second tip, I told you I was gonna give you three. My second tip for making writing more fun for the teacher is you need to focus on growth over perfection. I find the more that I work with teachers, the more I need to say this. I think as teachers, we're overachievers. So we look at our group of kiddos and we want every last one of them to master every last standard. We want them all to exceed high levels. It's because we love them so much. It's because of, we love what we do so much and we're so passionate. And so we get our kiddos in our classroom and we're like, we want them all to write the perfect five paragraph essay. We want them to use topic sentences and concluding sentences and interesting words and leads and a great ending and details and dialogue because that's what the standards say we should do. That's the dream, right? We, all, we, we kind of have that dream, but then, then there's reality. And reality usually sounds more like, my kids are so low. They can't even write a sentence. I've heard this over and over in my email box, in my Facebook groups. My kids can't even write a sentence. First of all, <laughs> this is a little off topic, but if so many teachers are telling me that their kids are really low, are the kids actually as low as we think or are expectations a little too high? You know, maybe it is actually normal that kids come in right now and are still struggling a bit with a sentence. And it's no fun to teach when we feel like our kids are all really low and, and we have so far to go and we're disappointed by the number of students who are struggling. That's not fun, right? It's, it's kind of overwhelming to most people. But what if we spent less time focusing on that perfection? and we spent more time thinking about their growth. What if we remembered, reminded ourselves on a regular basis, and you might need to write it down on a note somewhere in your grade book or somewhere in your planner where only you're gonna see it, that says, remember, these kids just learned how to write their letters a couple of years ago. I feel like when I say that, it puts it into perspective for me. I am asking them, a lot of them right now, I mean, English grammar is hard <laughs> and writing is hard. There's so many connections that have to be made in the brain to be able to put together a quality five paragraph essay. It isn't something that's gonna happen overnight, but I guarantee you, your kids will grow during the school year. I know they will. So at the beginning of the year, make sure you take a writing sample and you save it. Don't sit at home, keep it. And I want you to pull that writing sample out when you're getting discouraged. Because I think a lot of times we're going to find that because we're around them all the time, we're, we're not seeing the growth as easily. It's kind of like your own children. You're around them all the time and so you can't see how much they're growing. And then you take them to the doctor and they're like, wow, they've grown six inches. And you're like, whoa, I didn't even notice. That's happening in your classroom. So instead of saying something like, Josh is still not writing five paragraphs. I mean, he barely writes a few sentences. What if we start saying things like, 
Josh only wrote three words during his pre-assessment paper, and now he is writing several sentences. Do you see like that slight shift? Yeah, it's only several sentences. It's not five paragraphs, but what? If he started with only writing a few words and he's already writing several sentences now, that is so much growth. And we need to celebrate that growth. And the growth will continue if we recognize it. In fact, the growth will speed up the more we recognize it. Because if we can point that growth out to Josh now, gosh, I don't even know if you remember writing this sample for me at the beginning of the year, but I just want you to see how much you've grown. That's gonna pump him up actually to grow even faster. But also for you, the teacher, when you take a look at those two samples, suddenly you feel very differently. It's not like, oh my God, he's never gonna write a paragraph. Now it's like, wow, way to go, Josh. You really are growing. And so I, I can't express enough how important I think it is for you to remember your writers aren't going to be perfect. And they're just not supposed to be, they're kids. They are, they are children. And if you can help them to love writing, that is the biggest win that you can possibly give them. That will accelerate their growth. So focus on that growth. I know we want them all to get to that place with the five paragraphs, and I guarantee you they will at some point. Many of them maybe in your classroom this year. Some maybe next year but it will be because of the work you did this year that they're able to get there next year. And that's why we have got to focus on that growth and be proud of the growth. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here. I'm just checking the comments. All right. Yes, they do write more, Jessica, when they have choice and the research is not as painful, huh? Yeah. I mean, we're talking about English language learners who might not even, might be writing in a foreign language to them. Um, I feel like more than ever, we have to focus on growth when it comes to those students, with all our students, but especially when it comes to those students. I mean, English is hard enough for someone who is born and raised speaking English. Can you just imagine how challenging it is for your English language learners to come into your classroom and write? So start with the smallest goals. The smallest goal is to write, you know, I had a student in third grade and my goal for her was to write three words and draw a picture to illustrate those three words. And then after she could do that, it was write a sentence. And after she could do that, it was write two sentences. And see, the focus was just growth. I never tell my students how much they have to write. They're gonna write how much they're able to write. I just give them the tools necessary to be able to write. But after that, like some of my kids are only gonna write a sentence. Some of my kids are gonna write a paragraph. Some of my kids are gonna try to write a chapter book, but it's what they're able to write. I'm gonna focus on their growth over the year. All right, I think that this is gonna make you have more fun writing as a writing teacher. If you stop thinking, oh my gosh, every kid has to write a five paragraph essay by the end of the year, and you start thinking, these kids were just learning how to write letters a couple of years ago, and I am going to help them grow as writers this year. Every one of them is going to end in a different place, but they will all have grown. And I feel like that just like fills me up more than thinking, oh, all these things I got to teach them. So focus on growth over perfection. I say it a lot, so you might hear me say it all again, okay? All right. I told you I was going to give you three tips. So number three is take some training. Okay, there was this study done of 500 different teachers. They did a survey and only 50 of them had ever taken a college course about how to teach writing. Only 50% 50 of them, sorry, I said that wrong. Out of 500 teachers, 50% of them had ever taken a course about teaching writing. Whereas all of them had taken courses on teaching reading and math. And it just goes to show you that you have not been given nearly as much training and how to be a great writing teacher as you have other subject areas. And the reality of this, the truth is, is no one likes to do things they're not good at. You, you don't, right? Like if you show up at the gym for a, a Zumba class and you're like tripping over yourself and people are running over you and you just can't keep up, like the odds of you showing up to the next class aren't very good because no one likes to feel like they're just not good at something. So 
you haven't been trained to be um, an effective writing teacher and yet you're expected to do it. And that's just like unfortunate because we don't like to do things we're not good at and we're not generally good at things we haven't been taught how to do. So it's it makes it more difficult for you as a teacher. But even though it's difficult, I know that you're not a wimpy teacher. I mean, you wouldn't be here right now listening to me if you were a wimpy teacher. I know that you want to improve. I know you're passionate about the success of your students. That's why you're here right now listening to me. I know you have a strong desire to improve in your ability to be a writing teacher. And all you need are just the tools. Just like you were given tools for teaching reading and tools for teaching math, you just need tools for teaching writing. And I would love to be the coach that could help you along and give you those tools. That really excites me. And so I do want to invite you to be a part of the Not So Wimpy Writing Masterclass. If you haven't heard about it yet, it is my online professional development course for teachers in grades two through five. And I walk you through step by step how to create and implement a quality writing workshop that you can have fun with and that your students are going to learn and grow with. And this course, we open the doors on June 22nd. We only offer the course once per year. And so the course opens on June 22nd. It is self-paced, so um, you can take it at your own leisure. You can watch all of the video lessons in a day, or you can watch one a day or one a week. It's totally up to you, and you have access to it forever. And um, again, we only release it once a year, so I don't want you to miss out. If this is something you think might help you, if you're like, yeah, I don't, I've not gotten a lot of training in this, then join us for that So Wimpy Writing Masterclass and get on the wait list now so you don't miss out because after the opportunity goes away this summer, you'd have to wait all the way until next summer and I don't want that for you. So I have a wait list and you can get on it at notsowimpyteacher.com forward slash wait list. And we'll also go ahead and put the link here in the comments, but it's not so wimpy teacher.com forward slash wait list. Make sure you get yourself on that wait list so that when the course is available, you hear about all the details first. Okay. All right. Let me see. How do you double check if you're on the list? Honestly, you can just put your name on it. It's not, it won't, we won't let you be on there twice, so you can just sign up for it, and um, and that way you don't miss out. Christy says it's a great master class. I am so excited. You must have been, you must be an alumni. Um, would this course be? Oh, this is a good question, Paige. Would this course be good even if we required to follow a curriculum? And the answer is yes. The course is really about finding solutions to helping your students to become better writers. And you can do this no matter what curriculum you use. And that that is the truth. Now, will you be do, able to do everything that I suggest? Maybe not. But you'll be able to find enough solutions that you can mix with your curriculum to make it work. We have people who take the master class who use all kinds of different curriculums. So, absolutely. Um, all right. Looks like, oh, Lonnie says she did the course last summer and it made a huge difference in her students' writing. The best progress I've ever seen in one year. Bonnie, that means so much to me. Thank you so much for taking the time to share that. And my alumni, be on the lookout because I re-recorded the whole course. I wanted to add some extra lessons and some extra tips based on your feedback. And you're going to be getting access to the new version. I'm going to be adding it into your course library in June. So if you um, want to watch the new lessons or re-watch any of the old lessons, June will be an awesome time. I'm going to be giving you access um, right before I open up the doors to the course to new students, June 22nd. So the waitlist is not so teacher.com forward slash waitlist. But again, if you are having fun teaching writing, your students will have more fun. So at first, you may even have to fake it a little bit. I know I had to, and I had to act like I was super stoked about teaching writing, and that helped my students to get more excited. And then when my students got more excited, it actually was more fun for me, and then I wasn't really pretending anymore. But a few tips about making it a little more enjoyable for you, which will make it more enjoyable for your students. Let your students 
pick the topics they write about. It will make it less like pulling teeth and it'll make it better when it comes to grading. Number two, focus on the growth, not the perfection. All right, I know we all want a perfect five paragraph essay, but if your students grow by leaps and bounds this year, that matters so much more than how many paragraphs they write. And number three, get some training. If you haven't been trained or feel like you're missing the tools for being a great writing teacher, then take advantage of a training. I will be releasing my training, that's will be writing masterclass June 22nd, and I'd love it if you'd join me. All right, if you have questions, make sure that you stick them in the comments and we'll come back and do our best to answer them. And I will see you the same time, the same place next week. Bye guys.